So I've got a question for you. What if you could have anything that you wanted in this life? And what if you really realized that what you want in this life, what your soul really desires is to be in relationship with God, to move towards his will and allow him to align what your goals are, what your actions are, what your tasks are, what your priorities are, how you organize things. What if you can organize and prioritize in such a way that you could get those things that you want in this life? And what if you could create a plan to organize and prioritize your life that helped you to constantly be reevaluating your alignment with God's will, making sure that you're on the right path and incrementally making change to help you get to what matters most? What if you could plan this yearly so that every year you could instantly and easily see forward progress towards your goals? And what if you could receive more knowledge of God and more wisdom and discernment to make sure and have confidence that you are on the right path? This is Big Bible Mini Movies. I am Sean Jordan, and today I want to share with you the fundamentals of the journey that I go on every single year from December 25th to January 1st, that entire week, to start myself on this process that I'm talking about. And that journey begins at my favorite coffee house because I like to pretend that I am an extrovert, but at my core, no question, I am a closet introvert. So I like being able to be in the same space as other people, it like gives me energy, but I don't actually have to talk to any of those people. So I'm gonna take you to the coffee house with me and I'm going to explain really the foundation of how I will plan throughout this entire week, spending three to four hours planning so that I have planned and I do my best for that to be in alignment with God's will for my life. We just got to the coffee shop, but before we go in, I wanted to share with you my definition of intelligence. Some people would say that intelligence is scoring high on an IQ test. Some people would say it's having a degree. My definition of intelligence, man, it is so windy out here. My definition of intelligence is how intelligently does someone live their life day to day. Like for me, intelligence is how consciously does someone live their life and how on a day-to-day -day basis does that life, do the hours spent, get them where they want to go? And I think that definition at least somewhat resembles Psalms chapter 90, verse 12, where David says, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And the word number there comes from the word, the Hebrew word, mana, mana, which means to count, to reckon. It gives us the idea of prioritizing or organizing our lives. So if we want to gain a heart of wisdom, if we wanna be wise in this life, then we will learn to prioritize and organize our days. Now let's go inside and get out of this wind. Another scripture that works really well in concert with that one is Proverbs 21, five. And that scripture says that the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Now, Proverbs are principles that are true most of the time. So most of the time, the person who plans diligently, those plans are going to lead to profit. So in order to have a life that is profitable, we need to plan diligently. Now, this is my structure for planning diligently and it breaks up life into eight categories so that you can plan more specifically in each area diligently. And these categories are different roles, different hats that I wear and you wear in our lives. And these are going to be generally true for everyone, but slightly different depending upon your circumstances. So here are the eight categories of life. 
number one child of God. Now, our spiritual life extends over every category, but child of God is specifically the role that you have between you and God, your relationship with Him. The second category for me is husband. The third category is friend. The fourth category, family member. The fifth category, athlete. The sixth category, financial steward. The seventh category, professional. And the eighth category, hobbies. So if we want to both prioritize and organize our lives, we've already covered half of it. This is one time-tested way to organize your life. But what about prioritizing our lives? If you look at the next verse, it says, this is verse six, a fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor or a deadly snare. So again, a principle, most of the time, if you're diligent in planning, it's going to end well for you unless you're trying to go about making that profit in an ungodly way. So what does it mean to have a prioritized life? It means having a life that is abundant, that is profitable by serving God. Which brings us back to our organization, each of our eight categories. To prioritize a profitable life by serving God, we look at each of the eight categories, how we've organized, and we ask ourselves the question, how can I serve God over the next year to live a profitable life and just go down the list of the eight categories answering the question so how can i serve god to live a profitable life as a child of god how can i serve god to live a profitable life as a friend to my best friends how can i serve god to live a profitable life when it comes to my health and so on and so forth, until you've answered the question thoughtfully and consciously for each of the eight categories. For years, this has been the very first question that I answer in order to structure my entire year as a servant of God. So that's the foundation, and I'm not going to go over the next stage in detail, but if you really want to make these ideas stick, you turn them into goals, and here's how you do that. I'm just going to put a list. Your goals need to meet these five criteria in order to have the best chance of survival, in order to have the best chance of getting accomplished in the next year. I will give you a jump start by asking you to consider setting two goals using this five-step framework under the category of child of God. Scripture tells us that where there's no revelation, the people will cast off restraints, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Now, where there is no revelation, we have to understand the word of God in order for things to be revealed to us. This is how we heed wisdom's instruction. But without it, if we don't know from the word of God, what the bumpers are, if we don't know from the Word of God what the pitfalls are, if we don't know from the Word of God what the guides are, then it's very hard to set proper goals and stay within the lines. So my ask of you is that you would set two goals under the category of child of God. The first goal that I would like to ask you to consider is to read your Bible in the next year. And you can use this five-step framework to set that goal properly. And the second goal I'd like to ask you to consider is to pray in the next year. And the same thing, you can use that framework in order to set that goal. Here's what I know. If you do nothing else, but you set those two goals and you use this five-step framework to set those goals, in the area that you grow in, the category of life that you grow in is child of God, then the divine power of the growth in that relationship with God will cause every other area to grow in the next year. The rising tide lifts all boats, my friend, and there is no better way to raise the tide of your life than by being in relationship with God. Hey, I'm on your side. We are on this journey together. Let's make the next year the best year 
ever.